All right, so I mentioned video before. Um, next up, we have Lauren Nemeth and Todd Sacerdotti coming to talk about video. Now, come on up, guys. So if you don't know Lauren, she's the head of sales here at AppNexus. She's a dynamo. Is that a fair word to use? Absolutely. A Go dynamo. And so far, I've never yet agreed with Lauren on anything. So take it away. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brian. So many of you in the audience probably know Todd Satridotti. He's one of the really early stage pioneers in video advertising, also a longtime partner of AppNexus. Before we get started, I just want to take a quick poll of the room. How many people are making a material portion of their revenue today in video? OK. How many people are planning to invest in video this year? All right, a few, a few more hands. OK. So Todd, why, why 2012? Why is now the time for people to invest in video? Sure. Uh, so when I founded Brightroll in 2006, and you know, we were 100% focused on pre-roll, it was really early. Uh, in 2010, when we launched the Brightroll Exchange, we felt there was some kind of inevitability that there'd be this moment in time for sort of programmatic buying and audience buying a video at scale. And you know, from our perspective, that moment is really right now. And that right now moment is probably a 12-month period. And I think 2012 was probably the best example of that. And there's really three reasons, I think, why that moment is now. Uh, first of all, the scale of the category, just in terms of number of impressions, has reached a point where programmatic and audience buying at scale makes sense. Mm -hmm. The category is kind of tens of billions, and our exchange is man managing billions of impressions today. Uh, second of all, the historical price of video was, was very high, $20, $30 CPMs, and the sort of onboarding of supply has really made that price much more efficient. So lots of the folks in this room, I think, can, can be building real businesses in video soon. And I think the third reason is you know, we were really happy to announce today that Brightroll Exchange uh, pre-roll inventory is now available through AppNexus, so RTB is really here. The big RTB platforms are embracing video, and, and that really makes the moment today. Perfect. So I think maybe one of the reasons why there's a limited number of hands that were raised is people don't actually know how to pivot into video. So given the fact that the audience is largely focused on display today, how do they take some of those core assets, core innovations, and leverage that for video advertising? Sure. I think just following up on the comment uh, from some of the investors, I really think it's about focusing on your core competency. So if you're a local display advertising company and your core competency is really selling local media, you know, video is now just another thing that you can sell to that value proposition of local media. If you're a retargeting company in display, you can now retarget in video. I don't think focusing on video sort of as a unique product to s sort of sell standalone sure. is really the shortest path for folks who have big display businesses, but um, the opportunity to extend your value proposition in a new, new category is obviously a huge opportunity. So just to kind of go into a little bit more detail on that, where can people make money in video today, right? I think most of us are in the business of making money. So what are those key opportunities that you see maybe people aren't doing quite well enough that people can start to really innovate? Um, well, first of all, I'd say if, if you work with clients that are, say, top 200 advertisers in the US, or if you're a global uh, advertising provider and you work with top advertisers in that country, it's most likely that your clients have video assets and are have a video strategy. Um, and so you know, to sort of focus on the big TV categories where they're spending those video dollars today, that's probably CPG, auto. Those two categories probably represent half of all business. Um, you know, retail, technology, and kind of down the line, all the big uh, TV advertisers will have or currently have a strategy in video. And I would focus really where the money is today in TV. Perfect. So can you even elaborate, like, what are some of those success stories? I think Bright Roll has such a good overview of the entire video advertising ecosystem. What are some of the success stories that you're particularly seeing today? Yeah, I mean, when we, I guess when we started working with some of the major marketers, we saw a lot of what are traditionally test campaigns, small budgets trying to fit a particular need, or you know, maybe there's a television strategy and there's a little bit extra and they want to sort of test running video alongside it online. I think what we're seeing now is that the conversation is much more about the media mix. If I'm spending you know, $50 million in television, how many millions should I spend in online? And how am I going to you know, sort of allocate those dollars once I move it over? So I think the, the, the good thing for everyone in this room is that the, the discussion has moved from you know, what is video, what am I getting for money, money, how does it work, to you know, I'm going to spend in video. The question is, where am I going to allocate those dollars? And, and how am I going to sort of best get value out of that spend? And I think that's where a lot of these value propositions here can make a lot of sense. Perfect. So you know, I think a lot of people like talking about video because they hear high CPMs, they hear differentiation, et cetera. What are the misconceptions? I mean, what, what is not really the case about video today? Sure. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about 
online advertising in general, video is not <laughs> unique sure. um, in that area. I, I would say, I guess a few come to mind. So um, first, there's this misperception that there's not a lot of high quality inventory available at scale. Mm -hmm. And I think that really stems from kind of 2007, 2008 when the majority inventory was owned by the broadcaster then, and they were all very small and sold out. I think the reality today is there's actually a very significant amount of brand safe quality inventory at scale. And one of the things people don't realize is that a lot of the largest publishers serving video ads today actually are not video content sites. They're sites like Zynga or Pandora and people that are using video ads to monetize free content. So there's just a lot more inventory that's brand safe and high quality, I think, than people think. Uh, the second is, is that a lot of people think it's hard to execute video, and, and that actually has been true. There's been a lot of standards issues. You get an ad tag, it only works on some of your publishers. You know, I think we've solved a lot of those problems for our clients. Our integration with AppNexus solves a lot of those problems for uh, AppNexus customers. And so I think, listen, it's not as easy as executing a display campaign you know, the first time you do it, but it's a lot more seamless than it used to be. Um, and so I think those are probably the ones that, that stand out to be the most about sort of misperceptions. Perfect. And so as people look to pivot from what's classically just a display model today and kind of invest more in video, you know, what are, what are some of the differences that you see, especially in programmatic buying, between display and video today? Sure. Um, I would say the, the, sort of the number one issue is that it's a branding medium. So, you know, folks who immediately gravitate towards, all right, where am I going to drop my conversion pixel and what's the kind of ROI on this campaign, I think will, will not be successful in video today, at least based on the, the sort of evidence that we've seen in the category. So you've got to approach it. It's a branding medium. That means if you're measuring conversions, you really got to think about what's the impact of video on the whole funnel. This is top of the funnel advertising. It's going to increase your click-through rates, increase your conversion rates, probably going to generate search. But you really got to think about it, you know, from a media mix perspective and how video is of impacting the whole campaign. Uh, secondly, the way in which it's bought, we're seeing a lot of buying in video today around kind of GRPs and traditional television metrics. So, you know, this is something that's probably, you know, sort of out of the bounds of, of what people are used to from the display world in terms of using third party data, Austin Nielsen and Comscore measurement, and trying to back that into a GRP metric that a television advertiser could understand. I'd say that's something that I would reach out to others for help. Reach out to Comscore Nielsen, reach out to AppNexus, reach out to Brightroll. Uh, we have a lot of experience in this area. And then I'd say, third, and this is pretty important, is there's going to be the question of what is the value for my money? What am I actually exactly. getting? And so you're likely going to be running more third-party research on video campaigns than you'll have historically run for DR or kind of conversion-based display campaigns. So you're going to need sophistication around you know, surveys and uh, offline studies. And again, these are things that we can be helpful, I think, as partners. Um, but you definitely got to be prepared for it. It's, it's going to be a bit different than just you know, kind of conversion DR display. Sure. So can people in the audience today actually buy video, obviously through AppNexus and on the Bright Roll Exchange, and actually tap into classically TV budgets? Is that something that? I mean, 100%. I think that you know, there is some money moving from display to video. So if I were a display player, I'd want a piece of that. Sure. But the big chunk of money that I think everybody's attracted to, and we can say with 100% certainty based on our business, is we're definitely seeing real dollars being moved over. And I think the question then becomes, where does that money go? And what percentage of the total budget is that money? And those are things we, as digital sellers, can influence and I think can all benefit from. Perfect. So um, wonderful. I really, I really appreciate that. And I just want to make sure that we can take some time to open up for questions. So if you guys have any questions for Todd, we've got two mics up here in the front uh, if you want to come up and ask any questions about video advertising. You're welcome Todd to beatbox as well exactly. if you're talented. Exactly. <laughs> Bow ties are welcome. Um, I'll throw out a question which I get a lot while, while folks are kind of thinking what's relevant for them is kind of what are like the big opportunities in video today that sure. kind of are untapped? Um, I think one, particularly folks with experience in display, is sort of dynamic creative in video. There's a lot of vendors, you know, some of which I've seen here today, that really have a lot of capabilities around taking what is a traditionally a linear TV spot and making it more interactive. Might, you can change elements of it, overlay elements on it, make it more interactive. And there's just been an enormous amount of growth in dynamic display, everything from dynamic retargeting to creative optimization. Uh, this is an area that video, I think, really could benefit from a lot of the experience and expertise of some of the large display players. And really, could this is 
is not probably taking dollars from TV. This is probably just net new dollars to the whole category. Sure. But I'd say overall, just kind of creative optimization, dynamic creative is one. Uh, and then the second is really mobile video. We think you know, by the end of this year, a significant portion, probably as much as 60% of all video inventory we see will actually be in mobile. And that's probably not unique to us. It'll be pretty common across the category. So as people think about getting into video, know that mobile video is going to be part, part of that story going forward. Perfect. I think a lot of people in the audience also specialize in performance. Is there really a performance play in video today that they can capitalize on? Yeah, that we talked about that before. That's a good point. I mean, I think our bias is there's not a lot of successful DR in video, and yep. not not a lot of the video, sp you know, sort of focused folks have been really successful there. But that doesn't mean it's not a viable business model. It just means that maybe the expertise is not there, or maybe sure. the the sort of tools and techniques have not been you know optimized for video. So it could be a massive additional multi-billion dollar part of the video ecosystem if folks in the room can sort of create a DR story. My, my gut is it's going to be a media mix story. It's going to be DR as part of display video and search yep. combined. But you know, if, if folks can figure that out, I think it can be a huge, a huge growth opportunity. There's a question over there. Yeah, you, there's a mic over yep, there. Come on up. Uh, you had mentioned uh, Pandora and Zynga monetizing their content with video. I was curious what kind of CPMs you see these guys generating and what what kind of clear price you can acquire kind of non-video inventory to run video ad units on? Or yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not going to speak specifically to any two specific publishers, but I would just say, in general, the CPM rates have been becoming more efficient over time. I think the, the traditional rate being sold in the market today for most aggregators or networks is probably somewhere in the teens. Um, there, there's definitely stuff at the higher end and the lower end of that. Um, I think that the the players who are serving video to monetize free content, which is a huge growing category in online and will actually be the dominant category in mobile, you know, tend to be 75% you know, of that number, but not significantly below. Uh, in many cases, that inventory appears to be performing as well or better than traditional video placements. You have a highly engaged user who's leaning in, who's interacting with the content. It's different than kind of a lean back, just watch a show experience. So, you know, my bias is some of that inventory may be equal to or more expensive in the end, but they have such large amounts of inventory today that they're coming in the market generally a bit under market in terms of price. Gary. Hey, um, Todd, I, how, uh, how can you assure quality in an RTV environment video? I know that's a really high concern on the buy side. Sure. So if someone in this audience is representing inventory to a buyer, how do they, how do they know that it's you know, brand safe and otherwise? Of sure. I mean, I think brand safety across the digital media category is a, a massive remaining issue. And, and I think that uh, you know, video is not, you know, not included in that discussion. So I think you know, I start out with concentric circles of inventory. So when folks get started and they're not familiar with lots of the sites, they're not familiar with lots of the inventory, I say start with you know, a smaller subset of inventory that you have a high level of understanding of that uh, inventory. Secondly, you know, kind of as you get more experience, I brought it out to the broader volume sites and, and sites that you, you know, probably have to get a little bit more understanding of the type of content that's there. But generally speaking, outside of you know, how I tell people to kind of onboard into the brand safety is do all the same things that you do in display today. Understand the exact page URL you're on, run brand safety, uh, whether it's double verify or ad safe or third party. It doesn't work as well in, in video as it does in other categories, but I'll take 20% data better than 0% data if I'm a buyer. Um, and I think work with partners you trust. You know, I think that there's, it's really easy for innovative new categories to spur up lots of different vendors, but work with people that you have a fair amount of trust that they're, they're sort of representing their inventory in a way that you can represent to your client and kind of verify, you know, trust but verify as much as you can. And uh, this is actually, hi, Chris. This is an extension to that question. Sure. Um, you guys, you, you speak about uh, web display, but uh, this ecosystem is obviously changing, and those of us who publish applications in this world, uh, how does, how do you see, you know, we don't have pages, and there isn't like, you know, we, we can tell you guys about our app, but how does that, you know, how, how do you get brand safety down to the application developers? You're talking about mobile apps? Yeah, or, or, yeah. or I mean, you know, application, the, the app marketplace is changing in general, so sure. HTML5, mobile, like, it's, it's a big soup now. Yeah. Uh, it's a really good question. Ari and I were actually just talking about it at, at the coffee hour. But um, I mean, right now we will pass the app 
you know, iTunes URL for iOS apps as the page that it's on. It's sort of a, you know, doing our best with what we have type solution. I think that, you know, that's probably not something Brightroll or AppNexus is necessarily going to solve. That needs to be really an industry solution. What page is that on if you're in between levels of, you know, draw something on your mobile phone? Um, I, but I think that, you know, we should start with the tools that we have. We have page level URL. Let's fill app URL there. We have simplistic performance metrics. We don't have cookie data. Let's, you know, sort of put together everything we have, start to scale that category and get real data back about real performance, you know, after impression and, and campaign. And then, you know, as an industry, start to address that. I, I don't say that it's solved, but I say that we, we need to solve it and, you know, we're doing our best to help move it forward help with partners like you. Perfect. So Todd, as always, thank yes. you so much. Thank um, you. Appreciate the partnership. And I think a lot of us learned today, there's a lot of money still in video. There's a lot of innovation that's still needed. So we look forward to working with the rest of you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.